All WCW right. Monday Nitro, number 248, also June 19th of the year 2000. I love that heavy sigh. They showed a recap of what happened on Thunder. Is that what this was? It looked like a wretched show. <laughs> I assume this was a recap segment. Like a thousand things happened. Yes. It was like a WWE video that would recap like a month of action at a pay per view. <laughs> yes, yes, like, actually. Hey, we got we got uh, Seth Rollins versus Baron Corbin. Here's what happened in the last month. This wasn't even a week. No, it's the one show. It this was half a week. Two hours. <laughs> so Nash is stalking Russo and threatening to kill him. Daphne apparently dumped David. The Steiners reunited. Vampiro's fighting the demon. The triple threat is now a thing in WCW. Scott Hall's contract, I wrote here being burned, although clearly that's not the case. Nope. Steiner put Russo in the recliner. How did you get all of that? I did go back at least once. Okay. To see where I missed. I'm, I'm lost. Yeah. Limousines arrive. There's the cat. There is Jeff Jarrett. There is Mike Awesome. So cat explains, Vince Russo was hurt badly by the Steiner recliner. Bischoff is tending to a big deal in L.A. So, Cat is in charge tonight. He has everything Their imminent under, demise. under control. Pretty much. I don't know what this big deal could have been. <laughs> Maybe it's talking to Fusion, actually. Then security comes up and says, we've got very bad problems in the ring. What are these bad problems? Somebody's well, wrestling. Horace is in the ring. That is a problem. He's not wrestling. He's sitting in a fucking chair. So, Horace is sitting in a chair. He's got a bat. He says, oh, first the credits roll. Then they come back. Then he does his promo. He says, last week, I saw a fly-by-night in this business destroy one of the men who built this business. Hollywood Hogan. Who was the fly-by-night? I'm Gold so lost. Goldberg. Oh, yeah. Goldberg. So, Horace... I feel like I've missed 50 shows. Horace is cutting this promo about fighting on behalf of his departed Uncle Hollywood. No one points this out. No one calls attention to it. But I did notice Horace has shaved his body hair... Much yes. into much like a mushroom cloud. Yes. In a tribute to Sterling Golden. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking awesome. That may have been the best thing on this whole show. Goldberg, he says That's something Eric Bugenhagen should do. Yes, actually. <laughs> if he happens to be listening. Says Goldberg, you're in this for money. I'm in this for family, for honor, for revenge. I am not leaving till I get Goldberg. Cat comes out, he says. Goldberg's too busy, and he would kill your ass. Well, he's not wrong. He's not wrong with either of these things. Then the cat, the heel commissioner, explains... Is he a heel? Yes. I, I think. I don't even know anymore. As far as I know. He explains that since Scott Steiner laid out Vince Russo on Thunder, here on this show, there will be no outside interference. Tonight. Not on every show. No, just tonight. Just tonight, there will be no outside interference. We've heard that before, by the yes, way. Of course we have. More to the point, this was Kat's response to Scott Steiner attacking Vince Russo, which wasn't a match in the first place. As far as I know. Right. Maybe Steiner did run in on a Vince Russo match. Fuck attacking. if I know. I hadn't thought of that. I do know that he said that if anybody did interfere tonight, he said he would fine them and suspend them for 30 days, and they would have to clean the floors of his dojo. Yes. If you bring your happy ass out here, he says. Yes. He announces he has Scott Hall's contract. This brings out Scott Steiner and Kevin Nash. They persuade the cat to book Horace versus Goldberg tonight, so fine. By the way, I wasn't here last week. They... Turn Goldberg heel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It makes no more that sense. That is the stupidest thing I have ever heard of in wrestling. That's, yeah. That's right up. I mean, he was the only thing people popped for, and they tried to turn him heel. It didn't work. No, they did turn him heel. Well, I understood. But yeah, he, no one liked it. No, they were still popping for him, even on this show. Yes. I don't think they knew. I don't think these people watched the show. <laughs> that might That might be. So let's see. What are you uh, doing over there? Looking up uh, what a guy's name we'll get to later. So uh, let's see. Cat books Horace versus Goldberg. Steiner says, I want a match with you. Cat says, I'll give you a title match against Jeff Jarrett instead. Steiner says, okay. And Nash says, in that case, I want to wrestle you, Cat, with Scott Hall's contract on the line. If I beat you, I get Hall's contract. Now, apparently, they just bring contracts with them on the road, the paperwork, and everything. Well, he's a new GM, he's got to have all that paperwork. So what does that mean if I get his contract? Does that mean he's he's free? He can he can quit? Dude, or they... Nobody even knows what's going on with Scott Hall. Like none of the fans no. watching this show. 
Like Scott Hall, if you're only a viewer of the show and you have no inside information, he's a guy who like sometimes he's there, <laughs> then he's gone for a long time, mm-hmm. then they say like he's in prison, and it's like, what the fuck are they? T- where? Who is what? Like, what's going on with Scott Hall if you're just a viewer? I don't know. Nobody fucking knows. I don't know. So I'm asking myself, if you're going to wrestle him and take his contract, why don't you just beat him up and get the contract now? And he goes to do this, and then Cat flees with the crowd, and it looked like as he is fleeing, he threw on the brakes and grabbed a fan and attacked him, and they cut away. Yes. I saw that, too. I went we around it to make sure that was what I was seeing. I, as far as I can tell, that's what was going on. Yeah, he reached back and... and Proceeded to probably clobber this fan. Yeah. I don't know. It was very weird. The announcers ramble on for a while. So apparently last week, the announcers were all supposed to be shirtless. But Chivani refused. Mm -hmm. And Madden refused. Well, Madden said, I never make fun of Russo. Yeah. Why would he he punish him? They were like, okay. So. Plus he's already been shirtless on TV. Scott was the only shirtless guy. Wearing a sweater. So, Palumbo and Stasiak are the production truck. They're saying something about a tape last week of them being attacked. I have no memory of this. They have a tape they want to play now, but Rick Steiner and Tank Abbott are watching them watch the tape on a monitor, and so when they come out of the truck, they attack them, and then they leave, and Palumbo and Stasiak get up, and that's the end. You know what I just noticed here is that this show was worse than Modern Raw, Mm-hmm. But the two shows have something in common that I just now figured out. They're horrible. As we recap these shows, like, I don't know what the fuck's going on, and the show is just two hours of a bunch of shit happening. Yes. That's where Raw is now, except it's three hours. <laughs> like, the storylines don't necessarily carry over week to week. It, it's It's largely just a bunch of shit happens for three hours, and then the next week... A bunch of shit happens for three hours. Occasionally, like, something will make sense based on the week prior, but usually it doesn't. That's where we're at here with this show. I don't know what's going on here. I'm just recapping, a, like, Jared came out next, and he's mad at Shat for putting him in a match. Like, I don't even remember what match they signed. They just announced it, like, five minutes ago, but so much shit's happening, I don't, I don't care. And if I don't care, I ain't gonna remember. Shat says Mike Awesome is ref. Like, what? Why? To, to be a heel ref, this is important actually. Mike Awesome is the ref to be a heel ref and help Jeff Jarrett win. Okay, so Mike Awesome's a heel. Yes. Like even that, I'm not, I don't even know who's what anymore. That's very hard to tell sometimes. We have Young Dragons versus Three Count, and they just like do a bunch of moves. Yes. <laughs> and the only thing notable is suddenly there's Lance Storm. Yes. Now, listen, okay, I realize Lance is one of my best friends, okay? But even if he wasn't, like, if you don't believe me, if you think I'm only saying this because he's my friend, you have to watch this fucking debut. That was pretty great. (laughs) This guy runs in through the crowd, he does a springboard dropkick into the ring, and he goes like 30 feet in the air. Yes. He does another dropkick in the ring that looks like Okada. Yeah. He does a giant flip dive to the outside, and this is all in his fucking street clothes. Yeah, Mm -hmm. he's like Tommy Hilfiger. He jumps in the air cheering, he leaps over the barricade of the crowd, I watched and I was like, I didn't know, I didn't recognize this at the time. But looking back 20 years, he was like the best athlete in the whole Absolutely. company. Yeah. Who in this company was a better athlete than Lance Storm? At this time, nobody. I mean, even like Ray like, had no need. Prime needs. Ray may have been, but that was five years ago. I mean, I watched this and I went, holy fuck. <laughs> yes. What the fuck? Lance yes. could jump. I remember Lance doing springboards and, of course, the drop kick and spin kicks. I have forgotten his flip dives. Well, I also, for those of you who think that I only say this because he's my friend, I also remember before I ever had spoken to Lance one time in my life, I went to a house show in Seattle or Everett or somewhere, and I think he was facing Bob Hawley. I'm not sure who he was facing. But Frankly, he's got a great drop kick too. But did. Nice the greatest drop kick I'd ever seen in my life in this match. Yeah. He leaped 30... He was like an Okada drop kick. He, he leaped 30 feet in the air, and I was a worker, so like I knew he didn't even touch the guy. Yeah. But he stretched out, and there was a sound, and it was the greatest drop kick I'd ever seen live in my life. Mm-hmm. Whatever happened to this guy? This, this was actually a highlight of the show 
It was yeah, the highlight was, of the show. It was. You didn't let me finish. It was like it looked important. It looked like something that. Oh wow! I got to keep my eye on this guy, and it's Lance. No, that's no knock, but. <laughs> Sorry, he, he's gonna kill you. He's it gonna was, kill you with death. It was this new He'll, guy that wait, he's only this drop kick, Brian. It, let me re, let me back up just a little bit. It was Lance coming. I'm not from editing ECW. this off the show. <laughs> this is staying on. Whatever. Oh God. But yes, it looked important, and this was a new guy that came yes. from ECW, and like probably. Three quarters of the audience had no clue. Well, they didn't bother telling you any of that. That's, That's true. true. The guy had a flat top and jeans and a sweatshirt. Yeah. So, some I, dude just ran. <laughs> right. It was Montana. Some Olympian hit the ring. So, in hindsight, was were debuts the best thing Lance ever did? He's, it may have been. He started the invasion. He was great here. The Thrill Seekers were a house of fire when they showed up at Smoky Mountain. I don't know how he did an ECW when he showed up. He was a great war. debuter. He was a fantastic debuter. He made an <laughs> immediate impression. So, some stuff you missed there. That meeting with Jarrett where he made Austin special ref. Are we really going back to all this shit? The security guard who tells Cat... There's a security guard there who tells Cat, the crowd is restless. They want a match. At this point, the crowd goes, Yay! We are restless. We do want a match. Security guard, by the way, is that the Colorado kid? It may have been. I, I wasn't paying attention. I believe this man is NWA world champion like three months after the show. So the cat says, put three count in the ring. They do the three count young dragons thing. And uh, yeah, it, it's a cool bunch of moves. The three count young dragon. It is total nonstop action. <laughs> and then three count wins with a triple face buster and Lance kills them all. Goldberg arrived. David's looking for Daphne. David can't find Daphne. Tanae interviews Horace. His fucking question. He's a man ahead of his time. Are you crazy? <laughs> Horace says, no, I'm not crazy. I will... Destroy the man who destroyed my uncle Hulk Hogan. That was actually good. I thought Horace it was a was, decent promo. Horace did a good promo here. Big Vito versus Johnny the Bull for the hardcore title. Just went forever. Mama Luke's broke up on Thunder, if you're wondering. Looks totally outdated. They were all backstage. They hit each other with shit. They randomly crawl us on some scaffolding. They go through a table and Vito wins. The cat is going through his papers. He finds Scott Hall's contract. So Johnny the Bull is being helped out and up walks Terry Funk. So last week on this show, I said, because they did the Terry Funk versus Big Vito match, mm -hmm. and Big Vito beat him up and beat him and won. It was good. And I thought, fuck, of all the people to pass the torch to, it's fucking Vito. And of course, the obvious answer is because it's Russo's buddy Vito. But so not only is the man who Terry Funk passed the torch to Big Vito... But now Funk is going to get a young protege, and it's Johnny the Bull. Yeah. Who is writing this shit? I, all I know is it leads to Johnny the Bull tearing his urethra. Is that this feud? Breaking his ass. He, uh, I believe he, so. And he did the uh, leg drop to Terry Funk, as I remember. His mentor. Right. Hmm. What? Well, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I would just say I don't see anyone in this roster who screams, that guy should have been Terry Funk's protege. No, I don't know who you would be if you wanted. If you said, you know, if you, you determine we are huge going to erection. Do... No, <laughs> it's a hardcore dude. Sure, <laughs> sounds like it. <laughs> so this next segment, I will just read my notes. Chavo Guerrero is looking for the misfits when he is attacked by Ray Junior and the artist until GI Bro saves. What the hell is this? What this is is what I wrote here. This show sucks. Thank you. G.I. Bro then does a promo with the Misfits. Says it's time to get serious. Why Gives start? them all new names. Why start now? All it's the like baby NXT. faces are out. He says Hulk Hogan got put through a table last week. Flair's bald and retired. Sting is burned up all to hell. That's what he said. Burned up all to hell. Mm -hmm. Says so you all got to watch each other's back. Well, if you watch the pay per view, that is exactly what happened. He was burned up and thrown off the fucking Titan Tron to hell. To hell. <laughs> He promotes Captain Rection to General Rection. Says, I've got business tonight. And he looks at a monitor. Positively, Canyons come out and says, this is my business. And he leaves. So Canyons mocking DDP's entrance. He plugs his fake book. Issues an open challenge. GI Bro accepts the challenge. Now... It was an open challenge for a fight, but not a match. There's no match here, just a fight. What the fuck? 
I don't know if Booker at this point knew what was going to go down at the Bash of the Beach, but he sure was motivated and looked awesome tonight. He destroys Canyon in a squash fight. He tears his camo pants off to reveal Booker T's wrestling trunks. Canyon flees, and that's it. But Booker looked awesome here. He was great. I read somewhere that uh, Kimberly's last week was last week. Yeah. Yes. A lot of people's last week coming up. She's gone, yeah. That's sad. David is backstage. Here's where I noticed he appeared to be wearing a shirt that was eight sizes too big for Scott Steiner. Just <laughs> flowing around him like a, like a sail. He finds Daphne, who slaps him and has nothing else to say. Horace mutters about Goldberg. Goldberg mutters about Horace. Horace versus Goldberg. They cut backstage and show Kevin Nash and Scott Steiner watching. Scott's like, let's go interfere. And Nash says, mm, let's wait. Because that's what Kevin Nash would do. He would wait. Yes. None of the fans knew they were supposed to boo Goldberg. No. Or, or they well, didn't care. No, one, or the no other. one knew or cared. And if you didn't know anything and you just watched this match, you would cheer for Goldberg. Sure. Well, yeah. He kicked his ass forever. He only got cut off because he missed a punch and hit the post. Horace immediately starts to cheat and hit him with a chair over and over again. And Goldberg no-sells it, hits his moves, and wins. Yeah. <laughs> Why would anyone boo Goldberg here? You know, I watched the show on Saturday. Today's Tuesday, so I don't remember exactly what happened in this segment, but I'll read my notes and you can translate. Nash tells Steiner not to fuck Medasia too vigorously. Does that happen? He did huh. not use exact words. That's not a quote. Okay. But it's the message he implied. Okay. Hmm. She's checking. Nash said, maybe this no interference rule will work to our advantage. I don't know what he meant by that. He goes to leave. He points to Steiner and Medasia and says, make sure you have some energy for the match. Hmm. So I was right. Yes. Okay. The cat handcuffs a briefcase to his wrist. Then he comes out and handcuffs it to Mark Madden's wrist. So it's Cat versus Kevin Nash. It's much like Kane versus the Hardys, except much slower and worse. <laughs> Nash just beats him forever, won't sell anything, or won't, doesn't sell anything. It's very slow. Every time the cat tries to call for help for interference, Nash interrupts him with a violent blow. There's a bunch of nut shots in front of the ref. It's not a DQ. And Nash ignores all of this, hits a powerbomb, and wins. So the, the the gimmick here is that the briefcase is supposed to hold the contract of Scott Hall. That was right. the idea, yeah. So Nash wins. He gets the briefcase, and he opens it up, and there's 8 by 10s of the Shat. Yeah. Okay, Shat had 8 by 10s I believe that. That's actually. the funniest thing on the show. <laughs> he probably still has the same stack today. Sure. So Nash is unhappy, obviously. And Goldberg appears on the big screen... He's got the contract, and they set up Goldberg versus Nash with all his career on the line at Bash at the Beach. So they fucked you on a stipulation to convince you to buy a pay-per-view to see another stipulation. Yes. <laughs> That's exactly what happened. That's exactly what happened. And then Goldberg ate the contract that apparently is going to be on the line of the pay-per-view. Now, I, I will add that WWE has done the same fucking thing on Raw for four straight weeks now. They they promise you something on every show and don't deliver. So we are entering WCW territory here in 2019. Oof. I still got this Colorado Kid Wikipedia page open. Oh, Christ. <laughs> Artist versus Ray versus <laughs> Lieutenant Loco. He once had a tag team partner named the Scuffling Hillbilly. Yeah. That's awesome. That's important. That was a tag team, the that, Scuffling Hillbillies. That's important that I interrupt you, Brian, and let the world know this. <laughs> yeah. Today interviews Nash, who just notes July 9th is Bash at the Beach. It's his birthday. He's got a place at Daytona Beach. He's the only guy who's ever beaten Goldberg. He'll do it again with Scott Hall's contract at the line. Scott will show up. He only, he's only 40 minutes away. They'll throw a big party. So today asks Steiner something about Jarrett being the chosen one. Steiner's response is, I've got the largest arms. I'm the chosen one. <laughs> Some fine Scott Steiner logic. Also, Jarek can kiss his ass. You get Rey Mysterio Jr. versus Lieutenant Loco versus the artist. And the real star of this segment, the juice. Yeah, the juice is loose doing commentary, baby. <laughs> he's so he's so awesomely terrible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He, he dubs the misfits in action. They should have called themselves the new Jabroni Order. Is that the real MIA music, or is that a no, dub? No, no, this is a dub. Fuck, it's horrible. It's absolutely god-awful. <laughs> Jesus, horrendous. God Almighty, it's terrible. You can find some knockoff military music. Apparently not. But They it, can't it, get the song that the, the the Russian assassin came out to. That would be fantastic, I realize actually. it's the wrong military, but fuck, that'd be a cool song. It, that's, that song is never wrong. 
for anyone. <laughs> so, Hoovy dubs them the new Jabroni Order. When they ask why, he says, they suck. They don't have talent. They don't have skill. They don't have juice. As a matter of fact, they suck. <laughs> this is great commentary. So, it goes like three minutes. Travo pins the artist with a tornado DDT, and then the women all fight. Also, there was some hootie hooing here. I guess that's back. Ugh. Oh, good. Some hootie hooing. Yeah. Okay. David offers a bouquet of black flowers to Daphne. Much like Eddie carries around a puppy, <laughs> David Flair carries around black flowers in case Daphne's ever mad at him. It worked, and they embraced, and he carried her away. <laughs> so then he's leading her outside. <laughs> she stops and says, wait, my shoe's untied. He says, don't worry, we'll take care of it later. Why was this on TV? I don't know. I, I don't know. He puts her in a car, says, you go to the hotel, you get ready, I'll be there soon. And he turns and walks away. And I don't know if he was supposed to see this or not. But the car begins to drive, it goes four feet, and it slams on the brakes. So David turns the corner. There's Miss Hancock. They start making out. And Daphne is now out of the car. She still has her black flowers, but she sees David making out with Hancock on a monitor, and she is sad. The perfect event. <laughs> Who are the world tag team champions? We are told. Yeah. <laughs> we are told these men are the world tag team champions. They have never won a match. Okay. <laughs> Chuck Palumbo, by Your the way. Your tag division just sucks. Chuck Palumbo, by the way, lives and dies by it's an upper body business. He's got huge shoulders, huge chest, no calves. Zero. Craig making fun of Chuck Palumbo's physique, everybody. <laughs> I didn't say anything, Vinny. I'm just telling you, look at his calves. He hit there, non-existent. So, uh, let's see. Uh, Perfect event versus Tank Abbott and Rick Steiner. Oh, what a match. <laughs> Tank sees a fan who has a sign reading, Three Count Sucks. So he chases this fan through the building. Why? Is or he in three count now? Foreshadowing. It, it, this, this goes somewhere, Brian. Well, I know it goes somewhere, but is he there yet? No. no. I mean... This is how it starts. Vinny, you act like... It's impossible we missed 30 angles. He's got They could nervous. very easily be a team on Thunder. I am answering your question. For six months. I'm, okay. The question is no, Brian. This okay. is how it starts. Thank you. Uh, the answer is how this is how it starts. Rick is confused, but he makes a big comeback, hits a bunch of suplexes, and then Palumbo hits him with the Lex Flexor. They pin him with a double flapjack. The World Tag Team Champions now have a win. The Demon is meeting with Asia. Oh, my God. I actually wrote here, I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> Why would you? But I actually knew what was going on because, believe it or not, I invented a scenario in my own head, and I was right. Aha. So, Dale Torborg, <laughs> that's the demon. Yes, yes. Okay. Dale Torborg goes crazy whenever he puts the demon outfit on. He gets possessed. But sure. he doesn't like going crazy. No. And so, he's telling Asia, who I didn't know was his fiance in my... Booking, but apparently they're uh, getting get married. Sure, that's, that was not explained here. What? So anyway, so no, they did mention that Asia's yeah. his fiance later. Well, yeah, but anyway, so he wants her to burn the outfit. Yes, I'm like, can't you burn the fucking outfit? He you just, have no control over fire. He can't bring himself to do it. Oh Christ, this so, show sucks. He keeps saying it's his fault, and we can't have a normal life until he gets put away. Then Vamp comes out, and he but, attempts to explain this fucking storyline. First of all, even before that, while I'm watching the, it's not even Dale Torborg. It's the demon without his makeup, and Asia Dale <laughs> who have Torborg. Did they call him Dale at this point? Yes. He's Dale Torborg. Well, I know that, but I don't. No, think that's it, what they called him that's later. Right. Well, whatever. In this segment, he's just the demon with no makeup. Yes. And he gives his gear to Asia, says, get rid of this, and he walks away, and she's standing there, awkward pause, holding the gear. <laughs> they cut to Vampiro watching this on a monitor, and Vampiro was twice as confused as you and I are. Yes. He's bewildered. He's trembling. He's like, what the fuck? What show am I on? Well, he's confused because he doesn't want Dale to get rid of the demon gimmick. So then Vampiro comes out for a promo. And yes, as Brian notes, Vampiro tries to explain this. Dale Torborg, he says. <laughs> the, making those R's as hard as he can get them out there. Dale Torborg. And your fiance Asia says, well, he comes out. They're talking about Dale Torborg and Asia. And mm -hmm. There was some shit on Thunder where the demon, this is the announcer's exact words, robbed Vampiro of his virgin soul. Excuse me. Whoa. He robbed Vampiro of his virgin soul. How does your soul lose its virginity? I'll let you know. <laughs> you will? <laughs> I don't know. 
So I wasn't asking you. <laughs> I, don't, I don't have an answer. Okay. <laughs> Vampiro says he thought he had a lot in common with the demon. Now the demon's going away. So let's have a party. So Dale the demon Torborg and your beautiful, lovely, charismatic, force of nature fiance Asia. I think he was taking a shot. I think he was. <laughs> Will the beautiful couple please come out? I think Vampiro like legit hates everyone. Yes. And hates working with everyone. And lets you know as a viewer he hates working with everyone. He's Raven. Even more bitter. <laughs> Raven has some friends. All right. Vampiro, based on what I see on TV, hates everyone. So the feeling is mutual. A, well, it may, may, may well be. Asia and Dale come out, and the lights go out. Oh. Asia disappears. Are we done with this segment yet? There was an explosion, and she vanished. <laughs> Vampiro says, doesn't it feel empty when a part of yourself goes away? Yeah, when it blows up. <laughs> this show sucks. <laughs> she didn't blow up. Yeah, she did. There was a fucking explosion, and she was gone. <laughs> What, she vanished? <laughs> yes. Okay, so. of the two options, her blowing up in the explosion is more realistic than her vanishing. We witnessed a murder <laughs> watching Nitro. Oh, maybe an accident. Sure. Because Vampiro also exploded. What's the alternative? We witnessed real magic? <laughs> yes. <laughs> On this show, dude. You're You've got me arguing there. this. <laughs> I wouldn't say that I'm arguing it. Then I wrote in all bold, more shit happens. What did I miss here? What did I gloss over? Because I hate this show. I hate it. God. It's horrible. Thanks, Brian. Vampiro also exploded. That's what happened. Oh, excuse me? Well, based on your logic. It was a murder suicide. There was a boom. Yes. And the lights went out when they came back. Asia was gone. Fuck. So you said she exploded. The same thing happened to Vampiro. The show's killing me. I can only conclude he also exploded. Okay. <laughs> well, that feud's over. What about Dale Torborg? All alone. Wife blew up. Steiner is backstage like he's supposed to just go do some curls to warm up we'll film you <laughs> and he's got the, the cables the, the stretchy cords yes and he's walks out this hallway he gets them and he's like all right now and he's cut away mm -hmm. the triple threat go for a walk buff bagwell and chronic go for a walk mm -hmm. what uh, fuck if i know so here's the next match everyone it's buff bagwell and chronic versus the triple threat which would all be fine, except Chris Candido is on the apron with his arm in a sling. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's not Chronic versus the other two with Buffer Ringside. No. No. It's a trios match with one guy with one arm. Great. So they do this match. The one arm dude hits the ring, hits guys with a weapon, runs away. They both make chase it? him out. I've already given You're up. You're sweating profusely. You look like Shane I, I, McMahon I'm sweating, promo. I'm sweating and weeping at the same time. Okay. So, Chronic chases Candido to the back. Buff pins Bam Bam with a blockbuster. I guess that's a clean pin. Shane lays out Buff afterwards. Chronic comes back to save. I can't keep reviewing this show. I'm, I'm, I'm losing steam every week. Jeff Jarrett and Mike Awesome go for a walk. Scott Steiner and Medeja go Why for is a everyone walk. always going for a fucking walk? Gotta stay fit. It's Nitro. You gotta stay sane somehow. Jeff Jarrett versus Scott Steiner for the title with Mike Awesome as ref as the, and the cat on commentary. God damn, are we at the main event? We, we are. Oh, I can't believe it. <laughs> the end's in sight. You're going to make it. Steiner does a pre-match promo where he says the cat sucks. If he wants to be a good commissioner, he should do different steps such as panties on a pole or a freak on a leash match. And he can't leave that alone. He must clarify. Scott Steiner said on TV with a live mic, quote, if you catch her, She's got to spread him. He can't help himself. What? Okay. Doing this match, Medeja interferes. Cat calls her a hoochie. Huxton says, that's not a hoochie, that's a freak. <laughs> so, they're doing this match. The best part of this match, by the way, Jarrett like, just grabs Scott Steiner and does a, a belly to back suplex. Scott jumps, Jarrett guys around the waist and toss him back. Jarrett sits up and just shouts, I just suplexed Scott Steiner. That was good. Jeff Jarrett sometimes is just great. Hey, listen, let's 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 do the good and the bad, okay? <coughs> the bad is I cannot get over that Jeff Jarrett is a WCW World Heavyweight Champion. Okay. <laughs> like Jeff Jarrett is the WCW World Heavyweight Champion. Yes. It's, it's been two decades, Brian. Fucking Goldberg is there, and Scott Steiner's yeah. there, yeah. and I could go on and on. Yes, I, I understand. So, the good news is they had a match in the main event. They did. 
rarely do we get that on Nitro. They actually had a wrestling match that went minutes on end. Eight or nine minutes, yeah. Scott Snyder made a babyface comeback, which is absolutely ridiculous. Mm -hmm. And then I, I don't know what happened from there. I mean, I... So Awesome's calling... Actually, I got to... You know what? Let me do this, because I wrote, get this finish, okay? I don't remember the finish, but it must have meant something to me, because I wrote, get this finish. Jeff went for the stroke... But Steiner just shoved him down and put him in the recliner. Yes. That actually was cool, if I yeah. remember correctly. Yeah, yeah. Shad demanded Awesome break the hold by any means necessary. Awesome waffled him with a chair shot. Jared covered, but Steiner kicked out. Awesome and Jared double teamed Steiner. He made his own comeback. Steiner suplexed Awesome, put him in the recliner. Jared broke it up with a guitar shot, made the cover. Awesome countered the pin. Yep. I don't know why Roke get this finish. <laughs> cool, it was a lot. It's ridiculous. Mostly is the fact that Mike Awesome called this whole match perfectly fair. Right. He was counting even for both guys. He scolded Jarrett when he hit a low blow, which makes it a better ref than the other guy for the Cats match. Finally, Cat orders Awesome to hit a chair shot, so he does. He's been ordered to by his boss. He's still counting pins cleanly. Then he jumps up and starts to put the boots to Steiner. It made no sense. So, Jarrett wins. The Cat... There was a great moment. Shad hits the ring after the win. And he begins to do a kata. Says, I'm going to kick your ass, Scott Steiner. He starts to do a kata, and Steiner grabs him and gives him an overhead belly to belly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was awesome. Yes. Goldberg appears, spears Scott to death. Just speared the hell out of him. They're all beaten up Steiner when Kevin Nash's music hits, and Big Sexy comes a running. Conquering hero. People are pelting the ring with garbage. I just, can we just talk about how funny it is to watch Kevin Nash run? It is pretty funny. He's not graceful. He is not a runner. No. At this stage. If ever. So the show is exhausting. I wrote, I'm over WCW. <laughs> is there any chance it actually ends next week? There's no chance. Okay. We still have like nine months to go. Oh. <laughs> so. This is a bad show. <laughs> yeah, thumbs down in case yeah. you're curious. And I, you're not I, made this clear. We do not recommend watching the show. I still can't believe. Okay. I still can't believe that when I originally watched this 19 years ago, Scott Steiner was a babyface and Goldberg was a heel. Did that really happen? <laughs> that is, that is There's our, no way that really happened. That is our timeline. I wrote a book about this. I need to go back and find out if what I wrote in the book was different than what I'm watching here. Because I don't think this happened. It is weird. It is hard to process. Again, they made Goldberg a heel. Yeah. I remember that, but like... So dumb. I don't... I just can't believe that I'm watching a feud where Scott Steiner is the babyface and Goldberg is the heel. There is that, too. I mean, yeah, there's there's a lot going on here, and none of it is good. Well, Vinny, here you go. The finishes on this show were... Clean pin in a trios match. Decisive finish in a hardcore match. Clean pin. Clean pin. Clean pin in a three-way. Pin after shot with a Lex Flexor. More or less clean pin in a trios match. And then pin after giant reeking mounds of bullshit. Just think about all the other things that we could be reviewing. <laughs> like, we could have uh, started with New Japan. You start bringing this up, people get very upset about what we're not reviewing. 2012 or, yeah. you know, Smackdown from the beginning, which was at least the boom period. Or more of this... NWA. Maybe watch all the pay-per-views. They just put a bunch of Mid-Atlantic up. Mid-Atlantic, the great... We're watching fucking Nitro. Why are we doing this? It was your idea. Yeah, it was my idea when it was good. <laughs> we suggested many times quitting. You said, no, we have to follow it through. Yes. People would be very disappointed if we're not complete the story this Do point. you know that when I was a little boy... Yesterday? Very little. When I was a little boy... Which, by the way, I don't know why, but Paisley always tells me what I did when I was a little boy. It's really weird. Is she right? No. Oh. But like, if I if I say, well, that's not cool then. <laughs> if I say like, let's let's ride this carousel mm. at the beach, she'll say, when Daddy was a little boy, he rode this carousel. Oh. And I'm like, yes, I did. I think it makes her feel comfortable to think yeah. that I also did this when I was. She a wants guest. to be like what she thinks you were like. Yes. Yes. But anyway, you should be flattered. Anyway, the point of this is, what was I talking about? I don't know. I forgot my point. You were a little boy. What are we talking? What were we talking about? Little Don't boys. make me rewind this. What were we talking about? 
Nitro and how much it sucks and other I, shows I, I had a watch. point to all of this. God damn it, am I losing my mind? 19 years ago. I've been on vacation. You were watching Steiner and Goldberg, you couldn't believe? Nah, later than you that. Wrote a book. Help me, Rob. You don't even have a mic. Here, hold my... What was I talking about? Um, I don't know. God damn it, who can remind me what I was talking about? I just, I just did. It, I was a little boy. Okay, someone I was a little boy. <laughs> is it okay? Yes. Is it this important? Can we go home? Yes, no, it's very important. I want to go home. No, we haven't hit a 111 yet anyway. <laughs> so... Okay, hold on a second. <laughs> God damn, I listened back. I have no idea what I was trying to say. <sighs> You're not a little boy anymore. When I was a little we boy. Can curse at you. Somebody screwed up and said, you mean a few minutes ago. Who was that? You! I was a little boy. I said yes. I'm watching these old shows. We're watching these old nitros. Mm-hmm. Could be watching something else. Right. This must not have been that important. Guess not. <laughs> Anything else, Vinny? What'd you do this week? A lot. Uh, Tell us about it. We had a Father's Day brunch. I left that to, to go to a wedding in Bremerton. A lovely time was had. Uh, I've been trying to remember. What I, did. I was busy on Saturday. I don't remember what I did. <laughs> oh, uh, no. see, I don't remember what I did when I was a little boy. You can't even remember Saturday. I don't remember t- three days ago. But I remember being busy. Are we all losing our minds? I never claimed to have one. Nope. When I was a little boy, I did something that I wanted to talk about here on this show. And now I can't remember what I was going to say. Because I got distracted by Paisley telling me what I did when I was a little boy, even though I didn't. Can you help me, Rob? Um, I can't, but I do have a, a new contest for Granny's show. On okay, the- give him the mic. Oh, I said we need to have a the contest. You for have to Thursday. hold it. For him. God bless it. Um, we can have a contest for Thursday show, being that people can figure out what it was that you forgot. Yeah, what did I do when I was a little boy that I was going to talk about here on this show? It had to do with things that we were going to review. You know what I'm saying? Star Blazers. <laughs> That's it. What? That's how did you know? Because the only thing you and I have in common in our childhood is Star Blazers. Okay. And the motion wave gun? God damn it, this is what I was going to say. What? Space cruiser, your mom. When I yes. was a little boy, okay? All right. I think I've told this story before. I'm down. When I was a little boy, every day before school, Star Blazers came 730. on. 7.30. Yep. 7.30 a.m., Star Blazers came KST on. KSD, Washington. I would watch it right before I went to school. Absolutely. Okay? So I started with Star Blazers episode one. Sure. Okay. You following me? Put it that way, it sounds okay. funny. Then yes. I went to Star Blazers episode two. Okay. Episode three, episode four. Okay. So, I don't know how many episodes there were. There was two seasons. But for some fucking reason, I never saw the final episode. What? Uh, like every time the final episode was going to be on, I was like sick, or we were on vacation. I I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened in any of them. It's been so long ago. But I never saw the final episode. Well, don't go back so and the watch point, them. So the oh, point no, of this good. is... I, I, no, they're not. I've no, got some. The point of this is, I never saw the final episode. We don't have to keep going on this. <laughs> That's the point I was trying to make. <laughs> I am down with reviewing Star Blazers. Okay. <laughs> We can we can stop watching WCW and watch Star Blazers. Watch from the beginning. I could watch that. It, I guarantee, no matter what you say, it's better than Nitro. Okay, I'll give you. Thank you, that. you. Thank you. I'll give you that. All right. With that said, I feel great. We're out of time. <laughs> we were out of time. I am sweating my balls off. I'll be back on Thursday with Granny and Vinny. I'll be back tomorrow for Observer Live and Observer Radio. We're back in action, everybody. Thanks for listening. We'll talk to you again after a while. Good night. Bye.